Hello, welcome back to the channel. Um, today is electrical day. Um, I've got a consumer unit to change. Um, it's yeah, there's, I think the board. There's a board to change here. Uh, a down light to put in the downstairs loo. Uh, there's connecting up the a shed supply, um, which I can show you that as well. I think there's two outside lights to do. Um, so yeah, so if you haven't already, don't forget to hit the subscribe button in the corner. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram, I'll put the link below. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to show you what we're up to today. I'm done. So we're going to be taking this whole oh, Volex protector board out. Um, and we're installing a new Hager board, I believe. The one we've got is... Yes, it's a 10-way we're putting in. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, 10-way ten, board's going to go in today. And then, let's so say, the new um, shed supply, we've already run that earlier on. Uh, another day we, we ran that. Uh, that was a job for the evening. Um, yes, it's... Another beautiful day, but, but red hot. I'm glad to be actually indoors uh, today, which sounds a bit weird when the sun's shining. Uh, I know Sean, Lewis, uh, Steve and, and Kian, they're over at the other side. Uh, I think they're getting on with block work. We did the concrete yesterday, but unfortunately I didn't film any of that. It was just, just a mad rush. Uh, so I didn't, didn't get to do any of the filming. So when I go back there, um, I'll be able to show you there'll be a lot more progress because I've got to go and do a rewire straight after uh, after this job, so it will probably be a little bit. I might get the lads to send me a photo or two uh, from that one, so just to keep you updated. But yeah, thanks for watching. Cheers. Right, the board's mounted now. Um, so this is how I nor normally do it. So 
I get the board in, uh, get the meter tails put away so they're in uh, and get my earths in. So once I've got those in, I peel all the cables back. Uh, these were quite tight, so I've managed to get some slack. I don't know whether you can see that. But yeah, because I come up here, because we've had to come through uh, that direction for the new shed supply. So it's worked out in my favor, really, that I can get my hand in there and bring some of these a bit further in so, so I can dress these up properly. Um, so what the plan is now is I'll do all my testing, get all those recorded, and then I can then start dressing them in then. Um, but yeah, so I've always done it this way. Um, I'm just explaining to the client that I'll do it this way because if I get the board mounted and there is a problem and I'm trying to trace it out, uh, at least I can get some power on before I panic and think, oh, I've got to get this, got to get this board mounted yet. It's just something I've always done, I've always done it that way. Um, it was taught to me by my uh, instructor, that's what the best way to do it. So it's something, everyone's got their own ways of doing it, I suppose, but uh, it's always worked out for me in, in the end. So yeah, so I'm gonna do some testing now uh, and then I'll catch up with you once I've rattled through some of that. Right, what I normally do is I'll start up with the ring main. Uh, get that on, because then kettle can go on, most importantly. Um, right, so what I do with this is I always do my end-to-ends, obviously, first. But on this one, because when I took the board cover off, we had uh, these three two-and-a-halves all in, in one breaker. So I always mark them up, like a little biro mark. I find biro actually works better than in permanent marker uh, for some reason doesn't seem to come off as easy um, so yeah so so I didn't know which one was the ring at all if it had a ring or anything like that so what I've done is done my end to ends and I've found which so these two here are actually my ring so I've got uh, 0.889 on my neutral 0.89 on my lives um, or lines uh, and my CPCs I've got a bit of an issue. That's what we're reading. So, looks like I'll be fault finding. So, I will rattle through some others and see if we can get some uh, some power on in the house because the fridge freezes and things like that. So yeah, so all good fun. Right, I found the fault now. Um, there's my readings, which is much better on there it was traced it to a bad connection on the switch spur next to the fire basically it was just touching but as soon as i brought the front forward it just fell out so tighten that all up now and uh, happy days so i can start getting some power back on That's all um, in, there's gonna be a little bit more messing about with, but I just wanted to know what people did. Cause this this one here before was wired into what was the ring main, which was this one now here. Um, I just wanted to know what people did. I can't find the end of that. So obviously I'm not gonna energize it. So what I do is just put some connectors on the end of it and just tuck it up out the back so it's out of the way. Because I can't find, can't find it anywhere in the house where that goes to so i just wondered what anyone else did when they uh when they come across problems like that yeah sorry about that the battery died um so yeah so what i've always done this way and rightly or wrongly like i said i've searched everywhere in the house can't find it um so what i normally do in this is is 
um, put some connectors on it and then took it away. Um, I assume you can see that. Um, so I just put some connectors on, took it up out of the way, and I just took it back up here. Um, and then it might be that it's just been lost under the floor somewhere that they've you know, had some accessory that's no longer in use and they've just put it in a junction box and but it's still not disconnected the other end so so I'll leave it like that tuck it in and then worst case scenario customer rings me up and says oh Mike there's this socket here is not working or I found this is not working we've not used it for ages behind a wardrobe whatever then I've, I, I, I can come back and just test it then and just energize that up like I said there's plenty of uh, spares on here um, but yeah that's what I've always done so whether you do anything different leave it below right that's the board pretty much sorted now um this one here which is that one there that's the uh new shed supply so what i'm gonna go and do go and connect all that up then i can test that bed this up then that's done um but i'll take you outside with me next time you you see me uh because i've got to go in the loft and it is roasting so i don't want to mess about in there to do these connections because it's good run through well, I'll explain more in a bit, you'll understand. Right, um, board's all powered up now. Um, the armoured, as I said, it was run through in up there into the loft where I've just terminated it and then down and, and buried in the ground into the back of the shed. But the loft is absolutely roasting and the shed is just as hot. It's absolutely boiling in it like a sauna so here's the board that i've already put on um so i've never used these m2 m2 boards before for a garage board i normally fit hager ones to be honest but this was all they had so i fitted this m2 one but i'm gonna be honest not keen on them they're, they're just too tight for, for working wise and they're just nowhere they're not a patch on the hager um that sounds like a bit of a snob but they're just not as good um so anyway so i've got power into here now so um this is what obviously i'd already done so out into an earth spike down to here um so i've just got to finalize all this up now there's so all this feeds here is i think there's a couple of sockets uh one there one there uh and on the back of that there's um a weatherproof socket here and then there's going to be which i'm going to do now is two outside lights so there's going to be one one up there and one there going through and that is these little beauties so i'm going to mount them up now and then i can finalize all my testing uh we've put an led strip light in here which is this one here so that's gone in so it should be nice and bright um there's a window going to go in here because I think it's just it's just too much, um, too much of just wood panelling um, for the homeowner. So they're going to put a window in. Um, but now because the weather's so nice, there's going to be a lazy spa here, which just is just plugged in. So that's going to be now mounted up. So whether I get all that done today, I don't know. Um, there's going to be a weatherproof socket onto here armoured ran back into into the shed so it's all powered from there like so they don't um i don't know whether it's going to get done today but hopefully fingers crossed it'll get sorted but it is absolutely boiling um roasting 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 um looks like if you haven't already don't forget to hit the subscribe button in the in the corner um you can follow us on instagram i'm, I'm uploading probably more photos throughout the day that i'm doing uh, on Instagram uh, because it's usually a couple of days delay before I upload the videos but yeah so I better get cracking and uh, I'll set you up and you can see what we're doing
know why this is happening, but I'm probably deserving. I tried to do my best, but you know that I'm not perfect. I've been praying for forgiveness. You've been from someone else, cause yeah, we still young. There's so much we haven't done. Getting married, start a family, watch your husband with his son. I wish he could be me, but it would be someone who's I hope I got it. Right, just a quick one. Um, anyone who's fitting outside lights, what do they do with those connectors on there? The ones that normally come. I personally hate them. They're annoying. Generally, the, these ones aren't too bad in fairness, but generally the connectors inside are really small. So I've always used just, just some Wago connectors um, on there. I just think it's just, they're just loads easier. Um, Leave your comments below because I'd be interested to know whether people just stick with the manufacturer's ones or change them over. I just think they're, they're uh, they generally a faff because normally they're tiny in there so they just do my nutting. So yeah, just leave your comments below just so I can see whether anyone else like me just gets rid of these. Right, that's the two lights done outside. Um, working inside at the minute on the in the shed and it must be about 40 degrees in here absolutely sweltering um so the plan is with this one what i've done because i've got the hot tub supply although yeah it's just a lazy spa it just needs a 13 amp supply out there so what i've done is i've pulled pulled the leg out the first leg out put a switch spur up here which is there so that's ready to go so i'm gonna have um i think i might can't work out whether i'm gonna put it there or there uh, another ABS box, so the armour's going to come up, up here, tuck behind, and then be controlled via, via the switch spur, and then that can be left outside then. I've done the testing on this, uh, tested out great as, as I expected, but you know, sometimes it happens, you know, you catch a wire and stuff, so it's, don't always take anything, I know you shouldn't anyway, but people do take it for granted that you've got a new install, oh yeah, everything's going to be 100%, it doesn't always work like that, sometimes you can just pinch wires and, you know, it happens, that's why it stresses the importance of of testing, dead testing before you, you energise absolutely anything, because, um, you know, we've all done it, and, um, you know, sometimes you... you you know you, you just catch a wire and uh, or a wire's broke as you've over tightened it or whatever so uh, so yeah so that's just something to think about if you're new to the industry if you're you know and if you're not you've been doing this for many many years then you all know what we're on about it's all happened so so yeah so i'm just waiting for the minute to uh get the supplies come in they're on their way uh, like i say i use cef uh, in hinkley they're my my local branch um fairly new to CEF I suppose um, but so far so good so, so I've used other wholesalers and stuff but just to be honest I get a good I get a good uh, deal from them to be honest so so yes so I shall wait now I've got a cup of tea on um, so I'll wait until until the delivery driver turns up and then I shall get cracking with that uh, outdoor supply right <coughs> Right, the, all the bits turned up now, so I better get cracking if I want to get home at a decent hour. The only good thing about this weather is the cables <coughs> malleable.
that in there we're gonna go and mount this up and I'll catch you when I've just put this on and we'll catch you on the outside right that's fed fed through now I'm now at the other end of the planter um, yeah it's not my usual weatherproof socket to be fair it's this is an M2 one um, I usually use the BG ones um, these ones look alright it's just they're a little bit just a different way of doing things. I have to take the socket front out to get to the screws, but you know, it is what it is. They're all slightly different. So I'm just going to terminate this one. But I can probably be done with another meter of cable. But I'll make it work. And here. nice having this sun but man it's a pain in the arse when you're working in it it's better than rain don't get me wrong but this is hot very very hot i don't do well in the heat i get very agitated it's been a, a long day Hoping to get this bit done. That's me done for today. With a bit of luck.
tubing away like a good one. It's so hot, so hot guy. It's ridiculous. I think you need one of them. You know what they just said to me in CEF? If you want to get one of them personalised, personal aircon units, he was saying. So yeah, if you are listening CEF, yeah, I'll gladly take one. I'm going to be honest. Send one my way. Is that the fan that goes I don't know. I don't know. Never seen one before, but um, whatever. I'll try it out. I say I'm not the best with heat at all. Very agitated. So do all the lads. None of us like the heat. But very, very annoying. But I'm more of a winter person. Gonna be honest. Winter boy. Right, I'll get this mounted up and I'll show you once I've done that. Right, that's that socket in. Um, so what we've done, uh, I've put it up here into an isolator through a whisker box and then that comes down and out to the other side. Board's all on, power's all on now. Um, I'll show you down to the socket, which is down here. So socket's on and wired in, so it's all ready to go. That M2 socket, a bit more fiddlier than the BG. Don't think I'd be ordering one again if, uh, if I had a choice. Uh, BG ones, which is that one, um, is actually just a lot easier to fit. Um, to be honest, I just prefer it. It's it's just it's just that they didn't have any, didn't have any there. Um, but yeah, um, end of the day now. I'm knackered um, and very hot. Um, if you haven't already, don't forget to hit the subscribe button in the corner. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram. Uh, I'll leave the link as well. Uh, but yeah, if you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and I shall catch you on the next one. Cheers.